don't know what I'm doing. Welcome to my video. Um, today we'll be talking about a really, really interesting topic based on a really, really interesting article. But before we start, I would like to excuse myself. The reason why I'm using a black and white filter is just because I look better on it and it boosts my self-esteem. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the only reason. And um, because of the time that it is supposed to be a very short video, but my article is not that short, um, I'll be skipping lots and lots of good metaphors and good examples at the beginning of the article that give us a good context because of time, okay? But this is a good excuse for you uh, to read the article because the author is really sassy and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy reading this article, so I invite you to do so when you have time, whenever you want to do it, and if you want a further explanation or a summary, I have a written summary of the article as well, that it was supposed, supposedly was my first script for this video, but then I realized that it was 20 minutes long, so I erased it. So let's begin. We only learn a language once, role of the mother tongue in foreign language classrooms, dead of a dogma by Wolfgang Butzkamp in 2003. First of all, we have to start by knowing what dogma means. At least that's how I started reading this article. Definition of dogma, something held as an established opinion, a definite authoritative tenet, principle, belief, or doctrine generally held to be true. Okay? One way to describe this article is revelatory. I had the fortune to read this article before, last year, and it completely changed my mind and dogma. And we will understand why in a little. The context is basically the following. Um, in foreign language classrooms, there is a concept that for learning this foreign language, we should just use that language, only that. We should follow a mono, we should use monolingualism, okay? And the authors doesn't believe that, believes that we should use an alternative, the mother tongue as a base of references, of reference, sorry. He believes that the mother tongue is good, it is helpful for the learner in comparison with the common belief that it is actually not good and that monolingualism is the only and right way. Okay? That's the general context. And in contrast to this view, to this context, the view of monolingualism, Butkam, or the author, presented the following theory. The mother tongue is the master key to foreign languages, the tool which gives us the fastest, surest, most precise, and most complete meaning of accessing a foreign language. The theory can be broken into te 10 statements and the article defined them as 10 maxims. So be patient with me because for the video I will be mentioning those maxims and with a brief explanation. If you want to understand each maxim more in depth, uh, you can find them from pages 31 to 37 of the text. <sighs> Let's begin. Maxim number one, the foreign language learner must build upon existing skills and knowledge acquired in and through the mother language. See. Mother language, mother tongue, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No one can simply turn off what they already know, it says in the book, in the article. It is postulated that the mother tongue is silently present in beginners, beginner, beginner learners, right? Even when lessons are kept monolingual. Easy, has to understand. Maxim number two says, Erstad's techniques for mini conveyance function uh, less well than the mother tongue and can even be harmful. Textbooks, illustration, uh, textbook illustrations and board works 
along with the careful selection and grading of words and structures are compensatory aids that facilitate a monolingual approach but can often lead to misunderstanding in unpredicted ways. An example of this, well, the author gives a good example of how a word or concept uh, can be misunderstand, misunderstood. And if it is checked, uh, if it is not checked, I'm sorry, it can affect the student's learning process. Example, look at the sky, it's going to rain was a textbook sentence accompanied by a picture. Half of the class understood that the sky as the foreign language word actually uh, meant for the dark cloud in the picture. So they didn't realize the sky was just the sky, not the cloud. And this is a harmful misunderstanding. Okay, maxim number three. Uh, mother tongue aids make it easier to conduct whole lessons in the foreign language. A students gaining confidence and paradoxically becomes less dependent on their mother tongue. Easy, have to understand. That's the title. When used properly, the mother tongue is still very little time away from the foreign language and in fact help us to establish, uh, to establish it as the general means of communication in the classroom. Paradoxically, a foreign language friendly atmosphere is best achieved through the selective use of the mother tongue. An example of it will be the teacher saying, you have skipped a line. Te saltaste una línea. You have skipped a line. Another example will be that the student says, eso es lo que iba a decir. And the teacher will say, oh, I see. In English, it is, that's what I was going to say. Try it. You try it, please. Okay? That's what maxim number four, no, number three means. Now, maxim number four says, Mother tongue aids can promote more authentic, message-oriented communication that might be found in lessons uh, where they are avoided. Quick translations in mother tongue have, often helps without interrupting the flow of a conversation or even being noticed. Students are more likely to respond spontaneously and to take risk in the foreign language, voicing their personal opinions and relating um, more about, no, relating, 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 to talk about more, okay, about their private lives. At the same time, teachers can establish friendly relations uh, with the students and better explore both current and unexpected themes and topics. Maxim number five, mother tongue techniques allow teachers to use richer, more authentic text sooner. This means more comprehensible input and faster acquisition. The measure and well calculated contribution of the mother tongue can allow the student to tackle more difficult texts sooner. We find excellent texts all the time, uh, but we cannot use them because they are they contain passages that are too difficult and require too much time and effort, right? Why we do not clarify these passages by giving translation to the pupils or students in advance? That's one option. And another option will be that alternatively, we can re uh, recommend pupils or students to look at the foreign language versions of their personal and favorite books uh, first read in their mother tongue. An example of this is that we read a book, a book in Spanish uh, to later on read it in English. Um, I don't know, the Harry Potter saga, the Twilight saga, the Percy Jackson saga, the Hunger Games, um, I don't know, among others. You, you pick. <laughs> Maxim number six. Bilingual techniques allows teachers to bypass the grammatical progression of textbooks, no postponements of this subjunctive. To be honest, the, this maxim wasn't very easy to follow, wasn't very easy to understand, because it only used examples with German-English relations. But uh, with the following quote, the, I found it very important and it helped me to understand it. The reluctance uh, to introduce the past tenses very early on does not take into consideration the pioneering work that the mother tongue has already done. 
much to the benefit of the foreign language. In simple words, we should consider using the mother tongue since it has already acquired what is necessary to understand more complex and authentic texts. We should rely on our mother tongue. It will be helpful. Maxim number seven. We need to associate the new with the old. To include mother tongue links will deprive us of the richest source for building cross-linguistics networks. No quarantine for the more mother tongue cognates and related words. No more quarantine, please. The relationship between languages should be clearly established and not ignored or suppressed. The mother tongue, the most powerful instrument and greatest treasure treasure house of words is often excluded, excluded I'm sorry, in building networks. Mother tongue cognates can function as decoding devices even without being suitable translations equivalent and can help the students to remember the target word. Even more important, creating links to mother tongue words can extend the pupils' uh, knowledge of their own language. Maxim number eight, after this brief, quick and um, break. <laughs> it is not possible to avoid interference, but it can be greatly reduced. The native language constantly get in the way, walks in uninvited and tempt us into unwanted errors. However, the perception that the mother tongue apparently trap and trick us into making mistakes prevent us from realizing a deeper truth. Interference is nothing other the knowledge or skills that we do not yet, yet possess. It is so important, it is so powerful, the word yet. I'm not ready yet, the skills that we do not yet possess. Maxim number nine. Paradoxically, the counterproductive haphazard use of mother tongue may be an unwanted side effect of the doctrine monolingualism. It is shocking how often exactly what was supposed to be avoided by the teachers, the use of the mother tongue, actually does take place, namely that the prevailing classroom language is in fact performed in the mother tongue. You should read this. I love the sassiness of our author. It's really good. And last but not least, maxim number 10. All newly acquired foreign language items have to sink roots in our mind which are eventually deep enough for the items to function independently of the mother tongue. This is possible, however, only through the sensible and timely use of the foreign language and not by avoiding the mother tongue on principle. With time, the use of mother tongue becomes largely redundant and the foreign language will stand on its own two feet. Conclusions. The evidence that is available calls monolingual approaches into questions and opens up new paths in teaching methodologies and material production, and which is why we are studying this article today, okay? Uh, we should finally free ourselves of a fundamental misconception that using our mother tongue is something bad, because it's not, okay? And I think that was it. That is how a dogma dies. <laughs> Please, if you need further explanations, if you need help before the test, I can help you. Or if you want the script of the video, the original script for the video, the long one, I can send it to you. I can send it to you <laughs> and you can find uh, maybe my email or you just send me a message through WhatsApp and I will be happy I'm very thrilled to help you, okay? Good luck, bye.